I am Ella Kay, and along with David Firth, I have developed a package called Bradley Terry Scalable. It's a new package. It was accepted to Crown last week, and I'm absolutely delighted to be able to introduce it at USAR today. Before I talk about the package, I'll say a little bit about the model itself and when it might be applicable. So the Bradley-Terry model is, uh, is applicable in cases where we have a number of items and we want to be able to rank them. Um, and our data is in the form of pairwise... And our data is in the form of pairwise comparisons where in uh, a matchup between two items there is some sense in which one of the items can be said to, to beat the other item. So a couple of use cases. Suppose we have a league of football teams. We want to be able to rank the teams. Uh, our data, the pairwise comparisons here are the matches that they play. And obviously, there is a sense in which one team beats the other. Uh, we can account for draws as well by assigning half a win to, to each of the teams in those cases. In this application, uh, it's, it's small. There's only going to be a handful of teams in each league, and it's also dense. We have every team. Uh, playing every other team a couple of times. Another application is in uh, journals and citations. So suppose we want to form a ranking of journals based on their export of intellectual influence. The Bradley Terry model provides that. In this case, the pairwise comparisons are citations. So we have two journals, the cited journal and the citing journal and the journal that is cited is deemed to be the winner in, in this scenario. And unlike the football case, here we may have a, a large number of journals, uh, hundreds, possibly thousands of journals that we want to rank, and it's also sparse. We certainly wouldn't expect articles in, in every journal to be citing articles in every other journal. Actually, the Bradley terry model can give us something better than just a ranking. It can also give us a probability of uh, one item beating the other item. So that probability is defined as uh, pi i over pi i plus pi j, where these pi k's are a strength parameter. So uh, fitting the Bradley Terry model returns a vector of these strength parameters, which we can use to form the ranking and also to get the probabilities. There is a representation on a uh, the uh, log scale, which I mentioned here because that's what we show in the output of the package. And we can derive the log likelihood. Here, the Wij are the number of times item i has been beats item j, and this can be conveniently summarized in a wins matrix. So we have the log likelihood. Uh, we can find the MLE, right? Well, not always. It turns out that the MLE for the Bradley-Terry model does not always exist. The condition to determine whether it does or not um, can, can be seen from the comparison graph. So if we define the comparison graph to be such that the nodes are the items that we are comparing, and we have a directed edge from item I to item J whenever item I has beaten item J at least once. Um, for the MLE to exist and be finite, we need this comparison graph to be fully connected in the sense that there is a directed path from item I to item J for every I and every J. We don't need there to be direct comparisons between every item, but we do need this path. And we can see here in this uh, toy data set, which I will be coming back to later, that that is not the case. We have Eve winning all of her matches in the middle, and then we have... Um, a component up in the top right-hand corner. Um, that component in and of itself is fully connected, and we have a second fully connected component down in the bottom left. But no item in the top component ever plays any item in the bottom component, and there's no ground for making any comparisons um, between them. In terms of fitting the model, then, we've got a few different options. If the comparison graph is fully connected, we can find the MLE. We're good. If it's not, there are two choices. We can either find the MLE separately on each fully comp connected component, and then just remember only to consider the components in and of themselves, or we can take a Bayesian approach and introduce a prior that um, 
that then allows for ranking of all the items, even when the graph is not fully connected. Um, and this was introduced by, by Karen on Doucet, and it exists and, and is finite uh, in all cases. When it comes to fitting the model, we use an iterative algorithm to, to find the strength parameter pi. And it turns out that the algorithm for finding the MLE is a special case of the algorithm for finding the map estimate. In, so if we, if we take the case where A and B are parameters from the prior, if we have A equals to one and B equals to zero, these are the same. Um, B is not likelihood identifiable. So in terms of thinking about how we might tell a function to fit this model, we have all the information we need from the data in the wins matrix, and we can specify A, and if A is equal to one, we're telling the function we want the MLE, and if A is greater than one, we're finding the map estimate with that particular value of A. So with that in mind, here it's a package. I should note that there is another package on CRAN that fits the Bradley-Terry model. That's Bradley-Terry 2, uh, developed by Heather over here, and uh, David Furr, who is also the co-author on Bradley-Terry Scalable. Um, the two packages set out to do really quite different things. Bradley-Terry 2 is great in cases where you have a small number of items and a fully connected uh, comparison graph, whereas... Uh, and it can do sophisticated things like bring into uh, covariates on the items into the model uh, and so on. Whereas Bradley Terry Scalable just fits a vanilla Bradley Terry model, but it can do this for a large number of items and it can handle cases where the comparison graph is not fully connected. As I mentioned, it is now on CRAN, also on GitHub. There are two main functions in the package. We thought really hard about the workflow. We wanted to make it as intuitive and as user-friendly as, as possible. Um, so the two, function, the two main functions are the BT data function, which creates a BT data object. And that contains the wind matrix alongside a list of its fully connected components. Once you have a BT data object, you can pass it to a BT fit, the BT fit fitting function, along with the value of A, as discussed previously. And uh, then we have a, a defined a number of, of S3 methods on a BT fit object, as well as a BT prob function that uh, returns the Bradley-Terry probabilities that I introduced earlier on in this presentation. In a little bit more detail, uh, the BT data object just takes one argument, and we wanted you to be able to chuck into it any, pretty much any form of um, data uh, structure where we thought you might store counts for, for um, pairwise comparisons. So it can take data frames, graphs, uh, matrices or contingency tables where, where there are counts present. We have two toy data sets in the package, uh, which in no way demonstrate its scalability. They are tiny little data sets, but they do give a, a sense of, of how the package works. So one is a citations data set, um, which we can throw into, into BT data, uh, and we can look at the summary of a BT data object, and we can see in this case that the comparison graph is fully connected. In contrast, uh, the toy data set, the imaginatively named toy data, data set, is um, what I showed the graph of earlier. Um, in this case, we don't have counts. We have a code indicating who won. We have a code to counts helper function that can deal with, with that case. And when we look at a summary of, of the BT data object we have here, we see it's not fully connected, um, that there are three components, and um, uh, one of size three, one of size four, and a, and a single component. And once you see that sort of output, it helps determine um, what kind of estimates you would want. So if you find the MLE by component, the component of size one is going to disappear. You cannot fit the Bradley-Terry model on, on one item. It doesn't make sense. So if you want a ranking of all eight players, you need to find the map estimate. However, you may still want the, the MLE of the, on the components. We can now pass this through to the BT fit function, which, as I said, only needs these 
these two arguments, although there are other things you can play around with, uh, maxit and epsilon control uh, elements related to the convergence. And once you've seen the BT uh, data object, you may want to subset so that you only fit the model on, on a subset of the components. So this is the output of looking at the summary of, a, of the map estimate on the, on the toy fit. Uh, we try to keep it tidy verse where we can, so you, you get out some, some tibbles. Uh, we have a ranking on all eight items, and those estimates are arranged in decreasing order. If you had chosen to find the map estimate, you get that out by component. Um, and here, the items are also ranked, but they are ranked within component. Remember, you cannot compare items in different components on the map estimate. And we see that uh, we're now down to seven items. Eve has disappeared. There are other arguments we can pass to summary. So if we're interested in a particular, particular item, we can set that as our ref item. So here, uh, that turns the parameter for our ref item to zero and shifts the others accordingly. Uh, we can also subset with a predicate function, say, if Amy is the, the player we're interested in, just to get the summary on, um, on the component that, that Amy is actually in. The last function from the package that I'm going to, to show you now is the BT prob. Um, which brings, uh, gives you a matri matrix of the Bradley-Terry probabilities, or if it's been fit on more than one component, it will give you a list of matrices. But again, to stay tidy verse, there is also an option to return that as a data frame. That is not the default, because that can be slow to turn it into a data frame when you've got a very large matrix. Oh, I meant to say earlier on that we don't get the standard errors out um, by default. Again, that is another part of the package that is not currently uh, scalable, although we are working on that. that. That's a future development, but they can be included in this output um, if required, and for a data set of, of this size, it's absolutely fine to do so. So having showed you how it works, and I want to show you that it is indeed scalable, this is a real-world example where we have a number of companies, the first two columns are uh, company identifiers, and the data is citations in patents. So uh, we have a count of the number of times that, cita uh, that patents put out by um, the company in the first column are cited by uh, companies in the second column, and we have more than 400,000 rows here. We can create a BT, ob a BT data object uh, from this data in under two seconds. And when we look at that, we see there are twen over 27,000 companies. Although, looking at that, there's one large component of over 15,000 companies, lots of, of um, single components, and, and a, a handful of, of other little ones. And it's a very sparse wind matrix. As we would expect, the, the large number of items, we would expect a, a sparse matrix. To fit the BT, uh, to, put, to fit the Bradley Terry model on that, to get the MLE, where we're essentially just working with a 15,000 uh, square matrix, we can do that in about nine seconds. Um, if we want it on the whole matrix on all 27,000 items, that's about 22 seconds. So not blink and you miss it fast, but hopefully fast enough to be practical um, and useful in, in practice. A warning note about the scalability, it does depend largely um, both on the, on the number of items that, that we're fitting on and on the density of, of the matrix. Uh, but as I said, the more items you have, the sparser you would hope it would be. We are also working, hoping soon to be able to improve that timing. Uh, the, the main BT fit function is coded up in RCPP. The uh, main matrix we're using is it's a sparse symmetric matrix, and currently the RCPP Armadillo package doesn't have support for sparse symmetric matrices, but that is something that is being developed, and hopefully once that's there, we can implement that and, and drop these timings, hopefully, by, by close to half. If you would like any more information, the package is on CRAN and on GitHub. I also have a documentation site for the package uh, built through Package Down, and it is and there is a vignette on there as well.
I would love to hear from you, either questions now or comments, uh, feedback if you'd like to use the package, if there's any changes or developments, any ways that it could be more useful for you, that, that would be great to hear or if you're interested in getting involved. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, I was wondering uh, about the computational complexity in big O notation in terms of the number of nodes and edges. Do you have any idea? Is it linear or quadratic, log linear? Um, we would expect it to be, to be at least quadratic because, uh, because you, you're working with a square, a square matrix. Quadratic in what? In, in the number of the number of, of comparisons. So the, the matrix that we use um, for fitting the, the algorithm is actually, it's not the wins matrix, it's the, the N matrix, the number of times that I and J have played, that's why it's symmetric. Uh, so it's going to be the number of items in that. I'm curious about the relationship between the Bradley Terry scalable and the Bradley Terry 2 and like which bits um, like you can do a Bradley Terry 2 that you can't do in scalable and you're going to implement those things and um, I don't know, do you fight or not? Sure. <laughs> uh, we haven't fought yet. Uh, as I said, they, they are supposed to, to complement rather than compete. So the Bradley Terry scalable only fits the standard Bradley Terry model at present. Um, there are extensions to the model such as home advantage in a sporting context, being able to get the probability of a tie um, that currently aren't implemented in Bradley Terry scalable. We may do ties, we probably won't do home advantage, but uh, Bradley Terry 2 can handle home advantage. Bradley Terry 2 can also handle um, covariates on the, uh, on the player, so you can have information, additional information about the items you want to bring in, that's fine. I think you can handle different kinds of structures as well. You can put in random effects and, and the like. Yeah, that, that goes with the... Um, whereas Bradley uh, Terry Scalable is designed particularly to be fast when you've got a large number of items, m many more than Bradley Terry 2 can handle, and also to give you options when the underlying comparison graph isn't fully connected. Uh, Bradley Terry 2 assumes that, that that is the case. Is it, to, is it possible to add other variables into the analysis to find out how the components are ranked? I, as, if I understood you correctly, when the model is not complete, um, the we have a ranking within, within a component, but we do not know how the components are ranked. Is that right? Um, yeah, th th there is no particular sense in which the components can be ranked. They need to be treated entirely separately. There's, if, if no item in, in the component plays any item in another component, there's really no grounds for, for a comparison. And, and, and you, you just, it doesn't make sense in that context. Exactly. Um, but you, if you want a, a ranking on everything, you can use the Bayesian approach. Okay. Uh, that's all the time we have now. So uh, let's uh, thank Ellen again. Thank you very much. <laughs>